All right, welcome everybody to Learn It Live. Uh, today we have a super extra special Learn It Live for you today. Um, it's opportunities uh, through online education and we have an excellent panel from Azusa Pacific uh, University. So I'm gonna do a little intros um, really quickly. Um, so first I'd like to introduce Dr. Mia Long Anderson. Um, she's an associate professor and graduate uh, program director um, for the MA in Strategic Communication uh, program at APU. Um, and she teaches undergraduate uh, public relations and graduate strategic communication stores, uh, courses. Prior to joining the faculty at APU, Dr. Anderson taught at the University of South Alabama and the University of Tampa. Uh, her research interests include communication and sport, communication and race, and the intersection of sport, communication, and race. Uh, her work has been published in uh, Communication Teacher, the Journal of African American Studies, the Journal of Contemporary Athletics, and the Journal of Sports Media, and the Journal of South Texas. So very, very prolific, and my gosh, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, the next person I would like to introduce is uh, Dr. Heather Hoshiko. Uh, so Dr. Heather Hoshiko um, is pleased to serve Azusa Pacific University's uh, program as uh, APU's uh, program director for San Diego and the Marietta Regional Campus um, for the undergraduate psychology completion programs. Um, she holds a master's degree in marriage and family therapy from the University of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas, um, and a doctoral degree in clinical psychology from Southern California Seminary. Um, with a background in teaching undergraduate and graduate level students alongside program development, um, she's dedicated to providing a closer look uh, at some of the most interesting parts of the mind. Uh, Dr. Hoshiko um, encourages people to delve deeper into the weird and wonderful parts of the psyche, um, wanting people to fall in love with science and the brain just like she did. I love that. <laughs> I'd also like to introduce um, Sophia Harano. Um, so Sophie graduated from the University of Sioux Falls um, in South Dakota in uh, 2016 with a bachelor's degree in psychology and sociology. Um, upon graduation, she worked full-time uh, guiding high school students through their college search admissions process as an undergraduate admissions counselor at USF. Uh, next, she completed her master's in coaching and athletic administration at Concordia University, Irvine. Uh, during her time as a student there, she served as a graduate assistant track and field coach and a campus uh, visit coordinator for the team. Um, she has been with APU for nearly a year working with the students who wish to continue their bachelor's or pursue their master's degree. She has a passion for higher education and and enjoys helping students through the process of realizing their educational goals. That's amazing. That's so needed in navigating, um, you know, higher education for sure. Um, I'd also like to um, introduce um, Marlon Ware. Marlon is currently the Regional Program Director and Assistant Professor for the School of Business and Management at APU. Um, he currently teaches graduate and undergraduate courses in management, strategy, international business, organizational behavior, and leadership. He's a retired U.S. Marine Corps officer who has managed both um, uh, who has managed both um, and has worked as a civilian for the Department of Defense. Uh, he has also been an instructor for the University of California Riverside Extension. Uh, Marlon is a candidate for the Doctor of Business Administration degree and is anticipating completing that degree in 2020. Uh, he currently possesses a Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts in Management and Leadership, and a Bachelor of Science in Business and Management degrees. Um, he believes in continuous improvement, which is vital, which is a vital process in all organizations. And he feels that people are the greatest asset in any organization. Um, lastly, I'd like to introduce Dr. Drake Levishev. Um, so Dr. Drake um, is the Senior Director of the Orange County and Marietta Regional Campuses at APU and the Adjunct Professor in Biblical and Theological Studies at Azusa Pacific Seminary. Uh, he serves on the Advisory Board for the Institute for Communi Community Impact and the Jesse Miranda Center for Hispanic Leadership. 
Drake received his PhD in early Christian history at UCLA and MA in New Testament studies at Talbot School of Theology. Drake lives with his wife, Christina, and daughter, Jesse and Irvine. So that was a mouthful, and I'm so excited to have you all here um, for this amazing discussion. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to you, uh, Drake. Thanks so much, Heather. You know, it's um, it's really a joy. Thank you for the opportunity to, to be here. Um, we, you know, we've been, Azusa Pacific University has been a member of the chamber for a number of years. We're uh, really just down the street from the chamber offices uh, off of Hot Springs near Sam's Club. And um, really, we've been in the region, in the valley for over 30 years. It's hard to believe. That's been a long time. But we've literally seen thousands of students graduate and make a difference in education, in business and psychology. And so it's exciting. I mean, we have over 30 programs uh, at our campus and over 100 programs at APU in general. So it's really a great opportunity to be able to speak to everyone today. Um, so what we want to do in just a second is we're going to get uh, to some questions with this terrific panel. But before we do, I want to pass things back to Sophie uh, to talk a little bit about why I think you're going to talk a little bit about online learning and why to pursue uh, online learning. All right. Thanks, Jake. All right. Okay, can you all, can you see this? Okay, great. One second. All right, so like um, Heather introduced me, uh, I'm a program representative at APU Murrieta, so my job is to kind of guide students through the admissions process, all the way from just learning a little bit about the major through um, the point where you meet with a professor and decide which classes you want to take. Uh, and so first, we just want to start off by um, talking about why now might be a great time to pursue an online degree. Uh, as we all know, the past several months, throughout the past several months, we've experienced a lot of change. Uh, and so now, you know, might be a great time to consider uh, what a higher education can do for you. Um, so number one, you can study around your schedule with an online degree. Um, you don't have to, you don't have a commute and you can, if you know, if you need to take a test at 6 a.m., you can because your classes are accessible 24 seven. Uh, number two, you don't have to pause your career. Uh, a lot of these programs are, you know, adults might be working full time or they have a family to take care of, so they need some flexibility. Number three, you can study from anywhere as long as you have a computer and a high speed internet connection. Number four, you can engage with people living in different areas. All of us are even just talking to you from different areas of California. Um, and so that's kind of a benefit you get with the online learning. Uh, number five, you'll gain experience using innovative technology. Uh, and so again, these past few months, maybe some of you are a bit more familiar with, with technology and using Zoom, using um, different kind of online platforms. So I would, I would argue that you might be even a little bit more prepared than you think you are. Um, and then number six, you'll save time because the degree is happening online and you don't have a commute. Uh, so now Drake is going to take it away and we'll start the faculty panel. Thank you, Sophie. You know, I think you um, you hit on some important points in terms of this being a great time. And I got to say it's uh, so I got to turn Sophie's hit, uh, you know, kind of uh, escaped us for a bit. It's great to be with um, the rest of my colleagues here. I, I feel like uh, for each of you, it's been a long time since I've seen you face to face. And even if it's just in this space, it's really nice to be here. Um, so, I, you know, I think maybe a great way to start off is to really talk through and share I, what I'd love to hear. I think what I love, uh, you know, this crew has such a great and amazing set of stories and backgrounds. So what I'd love to hear as we start uh, this kind of part of the conversation is, um, Talk about your your journey, your choice of your field of study and why you enjoy teaching it. And maybe what I'll do is I'll start, I'll call on somebody to start off just to get it rolling and um, ask, ask you, uh, Dr. Anderson, why don't you go ahead and get us started? Uh, I have always had a passion for the media. I've always liked the media since I was a child. And I've also liked teaching since I was a child. I was one of the people who lined up there, stuffed animals and taught them with a the chalkboard and everything. So. Uh, I, when I was in undergrad, I studied advertising and French. 
And I did internships, which are very vital. My internships helped me see I don't want to do advertising the rest of my life. So I made a switch to another one of my passions, which was sports. I ended up getting my master's degree and I started working in sports public relations. So what I currently do now is like a blend of all of those fields because strategic communication includes the advertising, the public relations, it includes management, it includes organizational communication. So I've just been able to take all of my passions and kind of ball them up and have a job that is amazing. That's awesome. That's great. What a, what a, what a journey. Uh, so Dr. Hoshiko, uh, you know, you had quite a journey as well. And I know the brain's a big part of that. Why don't you share a little bit with us about that? Sure. Um, so I, I don't really think that I chose psychology so much as psychology had uh, chose me. Uh, I grew up in a relatively small town in Colorado. And ever since kindergarten, I aspired to be a marine biologist. And so I had heard about a local university that retained a faculty member that had specialized in marine sciences and had paired students with internships at SeaWorld and um, as civilians working for the Navy training their pinnipeds. And these places wanted a minimum of a bachelor's degree in biology with a minor in psychology. Um, but in my sophomore year of undergraduate, I had a failed shoulder surgery and the doctors had explained to me that physically I wouldn't be able to handle all of the swimming and diving for the career. And so I was really in a place of indecision um, of what to do with my studies, but I was taking a course in abnormal psychology that I absolutely loved. And so I decided to make psychology my major and I've gone on again to receive a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and then a doctorate in clinical psychology. And I absolutely love teaching it because it's intriguing, it's fascinating uh, and it's useful. So yeah, I want students to fall in love uh, with this field just like I did. And there's so many applications for the use of psychology that there are really quite an endless um, allowance for different employment avenues. That's, that's wonderful. What a journey. Wow, that's uh, these uh, unexpected uh, pieces contributing to our stories. It's it's really remarkable. I know we all have some of that. and. Uh, Mar- Marlon, I mean, we, we talked at length, but I'd love to hear you share about your journey. You have this great background in the, Ar- uh, in the Marines, uh, not just in the Air Force, but the Marines. So share with us a little bit about your journey and, and your, your field. Sure, no problem. Just like Dr. Anderson, I, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had the, the, the lemonade stands, you know, making money and profit. And that just intrigued me. I wanted to, the inside scoop. My, my stepfather was a uh, a business guy. So he really had a lot of influence on my life. And, and then like Dr. Shiko, she said that she grew up in Colorado. I'm from Texas. Everything is big in Texas. So you think big. My mother used to watch Dallas. Remember Dallas, the TV show? And I wanted to be J.R. Ewing. So how can I how can I do that? I want to be a business guy. So it, throughout my life and I, and of course, I, I went to the, the Marine Corps and not only, you know, certain, you know, uh, different countries and things of that sort, but they they have business in the military. Business makes the world go around. I, I found that in my lifetime. Every uh, from from healthcare to, to 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 just about every different genre of, of 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 thought, business is there. Everything has to have a business to to bring in a profit and making money and things of that sort. So that really uh, uh, stuck with me, um, and I love teaching it because uh, building relationships in the classroom. I, I noticed that. Uh, when I teach in the graduate and professional programs here at Azusa Pacific University, uh, you have a lot of what we call grown folks or older people who come in and, get, and these classrooms that come from industry and they bring a wealth of knowledge. And as a professor, I learn as well as teach. And this, it, the, the, the relationship is fantastic. And this is where I should be. So, and that's my story. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Mara. That's terrific. Uh, well, so you, you kind of touched on this, and I'm actually going to kind of get straight into this question, and I'll actually take it right back to you, Professor Ware. I, I, I can't, I, I, I'll just call you Marla. I have Marla, a terrible Marla. time with formality here, <laughs> here anyway, but uh, no. I want to ask you, so talk about the benefits that your students are experiencing um, from completing the program. I mean, you, you're, you've, you've gotten the chance to see, see how, how it's worked for them. Talk about that. 
the benefits from the business program, of course, you know, we, we offer the uh, BBA, business, uh, the Bachelor of Business Administration, the MBM, Master of Business Management, and the MBA, Master of Business Administration. And I'll just take, let me take it from here. Look, look, look at look at how the, the, the economy is, you know, it's, 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 it's up and down now. It's up and down because of COVID-19. Um, you, when you're down, there's only one way to go is up. So when we come out of this, this whole pandemic, there's going to be business is going to be there. We, we, what we do in our programs is we train to, uh, for practitioners, shall we say. So some of the benefits that you can uh, take out of the business programs is uh, not only uh, 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 growth, networking prospects, uh, uh, earning potential, uh, there's just so many different things that uh, professional, uh, you have the intellectual aspects of it. Um, it it's going to be there uh, through this pandemic, before it, after it's done, business is going to be there. We need professionals out there who know how to uh, market and we need people who know how to finance and accounting and all the different aspects of business, especially in the management field and leading people. So those are some of the benefits that you can take from my program out. As soon as you hit the door, you're running. That's wonderful. That's great and concrete. Uh, and, and now, uh, Dr. Hoshiko, you you uh, also work with a degree completion completion program at Azusa uh, Pacific. Can you tell us a little about benefits your students experience students are experiencing as they graduate? Absolutely. So, with platforms now that include online options, blended learning, and convenient class scheduling, our bachelor completion program really attenuates to the crucial needs that students have upon returning to school. So there's that flexibility, there's advising readily available and resources to help balance that people have um, and they fill, but also use them as innate strengths to finish their degree. So Azusa's program is unique in that it provides having master's and doctoral level faculty offering you career advice, recommending community internship placements, reviewing your resumes, um, your curriculum vitas, graduate school applications, and other unique things that are provided in a specifically a course called field experience. Um, whereas large universities are unable to provide the oversight for an internship course, Azusa has the resources and connections within the community to give students the opportunity to actually go out there practice those skills and be in a professional setting. And so that experience definitely can um, make or break landing a prospective job or getting a coveted spot in a graduate program. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Hushko. That, that, uh, that internship experience, uh, certainly those practical hands-on experiences make all the difference, don't they? Yeah. Dr. Anderson, did you want to add to the conversation, this, this, this question in terms of the benefits that you're seeing, your students are seeing from completing your program? Sure. Similar to what uh, Professor Ware was saying, our program is designed for the practitioner. It's designed so that when you get out, you are ready to be in the workforce. Uh, public relations, strategic communication, growing field. Um, each of us can see that you turn on the news every day, whether it's watching um, the press secretary present something that President Trump has said, or whether you are watching another crisis that is being had by another organization. You know, strategic communication is there. So it's a growing field. And what I try to do uh, in our program is I try to prepare people with the pieces they will need. So when you get out of our program, you have a portfolio that you are able to present in the workforce and say, this is what I have done, not this is what I theoretically learned about. So we really do try to train the practitioner as well, as Professor Ware was saying, which is something that's very vital in our field because they are gonna be looking for the experience. And if you don't have those internships, if you haven't been able to work in the industry before, you are coming out with something that demonstrates I can do the work. And so that is how we have planned the program. And I think that is what my students see every time they complete a course. In fact, one of my students from my last course emailed me afterwards and said, oh my gosh, like I am learning so much. Thank you for this. And that is what my hope is for every student in every course to have that same feeling of, yes, I'm coming out of here with knowledge, but also with application. Wonderful. Uh, Marley, uh, Marley, do you want to add something to that? No, that was that was spot on. That was very okay. similar. A lot of uh, yeah, that's good. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so this is a great one, and maybe I'll put this out there and, and see who jumps at it. Excuse me. Uh, 
it, just the, this question about future trends, because it's it's one thing to be prepared, and I think I've I've heard each of you allude to this sense that um, you know the cur what's going on in the world really influences kind of the core of the curriculum, the core of how you're approaching things. But all of our programs, to a certain extent, look to the future. They look at the job outlook. They look at trends that are coming. And what would you say for each of your fields is kind of a job outlook, and what trends are you looking at to say, yeah, this is what we want to prepare our students for. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind taking that. Um, I love research and I'm a research nerd, uh, which I guess goes well with the profession. Um, but I honestly, and I'm biased, but I honestly can't think of another profession that is projected to have as much growth right now as psychology. And uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually agrees with me. Uh, so all three scientist groups, life sciences, physical sciences, and social sciences are expected to grow at an above average rate over 2021, 2022. So nearly four um, in five new jobs that's created among the life, physical, and social sciences occupations group um, will require a bachelor's degree or higher, and more than two in five will be at the graduate level. Um, so you've got to start somewhere. So basically, faster growth is expected for the occupation. Um, and this was all information that was gathered pre-COVID-19. So with the compounding effects of the pandemic, research is demonstrating that we will likely see a post-outbreak need for many areas that psychologists work in, which include but aren't limited to uh, individual therapy, uh, marriage therapy, family therapy, counseling and grief and trauma, uh, substance use disorder treatment, uh, research in the sociological and psychological effects, and industrial organizational reorganization for companies. Um, so that also coincides with the baby boomer generation that is aging, and that means an increased demand for mental health care, rehabilitation centers, and medical services. So. I really foresee a spike in the need for helping professions that will be unprecedented. Wow, you know, pre uh, really relevant uh, kind of points. I mean, there's so much there. And, you know, I felt like going into this pandemic that, that the, you know, your field was already uh, one to consider, but in light of everything going on and the behavioral health issues that even the CDC is mentioning these days and so many other studies, it, it seems like there's, there's a lot of possibilities. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Hoshiko. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Other other comments? Other 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 to add things to add in terms of future trends. Dr. Anderson. Okay. Um, our our field is of course growing as well. Um, I'm a research nerd, like Dr. Hoshiko, so I've also looked at the numbers from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, and they predicted from 2014 to 2024, there would be a 6% increase in our industry. And now they're predicting from 2019 to 2029, there'd be a 7% increase. And so the field is definitely growing. And one of the reasons it's growing is because you would be hard pressed to find an organization that does not care about its image. And that is what strategic communicators do. We communicate the image. We help build the image of the brand. We help sustain the image of the brand. We're there for crises when they occur. We're looking at issues that will lead to crises. So this is our job. So even the commercials you've seen during COVID-19, where people are saying we're all in a pandemic together and companies are putting out that message, that is crafted by strategic communicators. When you see speeches that are given for government, we're in election season right now. A lot of those speeches are crafted by strategic communicators. So the field, like that. field is growing. Business, all of those businesses are, are needing strategic communicators. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Right. Professor Ware, did you want to continue? Uh, yeah, I, ab uh, absolutely. There? Absolutely. Um, we all know we're, we're still in, in, in the pandemic in business. I mean, from 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 private to public to government in those fields, the business fits in each, each one of those fields. I was looking at, up some of the st statistics earlier and I looked at a, a couple of different uh, um, um, 
information sources, U.S. News and World Reports, you know, different uh, fields like finance managers, accounting, research uh, analysts and things of that sort. We are projecting an upward trend through 2028 in business, depending on which field you go into, some all the way up to 20 percent, some 7 percent. But all of the fields are, are looking at an upward trend and uh, and through 2028. I was looking at um, the in demand was at the in demand majors and business did pop up as number four, nursing being number one. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, I did notice also that uh, 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 nationwide right now, because of COVID-19, we've had a you know pretty bad dip in uh, uh, the unemployment rate. Was, it hovers at about 8.4 percent. And also notice in California, it's at 13.3 uh, percent, according to the Employment uh, Development Department or division. So, um, um, uh, like, I, again, what goes down must come up. When we come up and surface for air, we're going to need business, people who understand processes and procedures to bring us out of this. This is what this is how we make money, this is how we generate, this is how we pay our uh, taxes, this is how we pay county, uh, local governments need to be able to make money for us to be make America great again, so to speak. So. Um, we have a really good uh, future trend in business. So we need professionals out there learning about business, uh, 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 making things happen. And uh, Azusa Pacific University is definitely a place to do it. So I'm, I'll be waiting on them when they come. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ware, for those comments. And I, I feel like, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of the statistics uh, kind of, I think, I love this evidence-based approach to what we're talking about. And we've heard it here. Uh, transitioning, I, I, I want to hear um, a little bit about kind of the instructional process, the pedag pedagogical process, if you will, um, and, and talk about maybe um, what you are doing to make online learning a great experience for your students. We've been stuck in our, uh, uh, you know, in our Zoom settings for a while uh, and um, doing the online learning. So what um, are you doing to make that a good experience for your students? Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Hoshiko if you could you could start with uh, maybe your answer to this one if you're open to that. Sure, I'm going to piggyback if that's okay off of um, some of Professor Ware's soon to be Dr. Ware's uh, comments on business. But according to data that's been collected by uh, the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center, there are approximately 36 million Americans who have left college without the receipt of a degree. And all that money that is invested in that education adds up and becomes astronomical of people with partially done degrees where we're like, hey, come and finish your degree with us. Um, and it's, you know, people leave school for several circumstances. It could be, um, you know, a lot of life circumstances depending on when they had their departure. But now more than ever, a bachelor's degree is essential. Um, a career builder survey conducted in 2017 found that 41% of employers are seeking candidates to fill jobs uh, and need people who possess a bachelor's degree, whereas in the past, a high school diploma would have been required. So not only does a degree increase your earning potential, um, but it also definitely gives you more doors of what you can do. So our program director for the online campus, um, Robert Linzolato, has been extremely dedicated to making sure alongside our team that online classes are easily accessible and that they're interactive. So the university is really um, amazing in that it allows concurrent enrollment. So students can enroll in two institutions at once if they want to. So that means that you can transfer up to 70 units from a two-year college or up to 90 units from a four-year college to get that degree finished. Um, and that all APU classes are delivered by main campus, regional campus professors, and the curriculum is identical to the courses at the main campus. And faculty are also available by phone or video if needed. So student engagement is extremely important to us and um, it's definitely a highlight as well as the crossover to uh, regional campuses. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but it's that flexibility that allows people to um, come back and not only come back when they're ready, but that attenuates to their learning style. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Koshiko. Uh, Professor Ware, did you want to did you want to um, share a little bit about um, what you're doing to make that uh, online experience a good one for your students? 
I think there was, there's some great context that Dr. Hoshiko talked about. Um, what would love to hear your perspective as well. Indeed, indeed she did. Um, what I'm doing is what I found um, that, that's been very helpful is the constant presence. Uh, um, again, the, I hate to keep going back to COVID-19, but this really changed the game. It really opened online uh, learning uh, across the spectrum, not with just our university, but across the nation. Um, and a lot of people were uh, even up, even afraid of, of going online to learn a uh, subject matter. And a lot of people just and I've heard a lot of students come back to tell me I've gotten emails and, and messages saying that they would they would uh, sometimes they, they they would rather be in front of a, a professor or a live person. But then they've also come back to say they've been they've become more comfortable with the online setting um, because of the systems uh, that we use, like 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 Dr. Chico, as Chico said earlier, um, we have really closed the gap with the online learning piece, making students more comfortable, making the learning environment better for them. Uh, and and if, if I can be frank, it, it, it some of my students, and I'll just relay some of their the, the, the things that they've told me, they, they like being able to put their bunny slippers on, if you will, and being able to learn from a professor in the, com in the comfort of their own homes. Um, as long as we can mimic uh, the face-to-face -face contact, that, that's constant presence, feedback, getting back with students in a timely manner, uh, um, uh, making the, the environment as rich as possible in learning. Because the same syllabus that you use in the classroom, you can deliver that using synchronous and asynchronous learning uh, on, on the computer system. It's been done. We use the Canvas computer system, which is, to me, it's the top, top of the line system at Azusa Pacific University. So um, it, 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 in building that student-teacher relationship, just because it's a computer screen, it's, it's really turning out to make no difference at all. It's just like being face-to-face, -face, it can be. And to make students uh, comfortable with that situation has been really, really uh, good as, as far as I'm concerned in, in, in my book. So, yeah. Excellent. Here, I was about to talk without, you know, <laughs> you talk about the, uh, the, the functionalities. The, the functionalities don't work if you don't hit the mute button and turn it <laughs> off, right? <laughs> oh, too good. <laughs> So, um, well, you know, I think both of you brought some really uh, great perspective in terms of the learning experience and in terms of kind of the opportunity that this season has presented. Um, I guess one of the things I'd love to hear from from um, maybe uh, Professor Ware, if you could kind of um, kind of engage this question, and that is what what have students been telling you or what have they been saying to you? about the online learning experience? What have they enjoyed most? What feedback have you gotten? Again, some of the feedback that I've gotten is, again, it, it took uh, some months in, in actually taking the classes. It was fear, fear of the unknown. Uh, some of them weren't really good at computer, uh, uh, you know, access and all that good stuff. Um, but it's been, re it's been really good. They've, it's, it's been a slow process. But it's been good. They've grown on it. This is the way you can you have to get your degree now in order to protect you. And uh, at Azusa Pacific University, again, we have both. We have face to face. Even when there is no pandemic, we can do face to face, or we can do we can do online. But I think this is this is the way of the future. I think the future is going to uh, be more engaged with online learning. So uh, the feedback I've gotten was positive. Some negative, you know, some negative. Some of our older learners. You know, and, and, and they, it, it, it's still challenging to them, but we, we're ready to sit down with them one on one and uh, and go over whatever their deficiencies are. We can handle that. So that's been my experience. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Hoshko or Do Dr. Anderson, do either of you have something to add to that in terms of the student feedback? Well, students, Here, I have it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, student feedback has been for us overwhelmingly pretty positive again. You're always going to have a couple people who struggle to get into kind of the day to day. But once they have got it down, they feel more confident in it. They're good to go. Um, but I think we were really ahead of the curve in already having um, a planned out you know, way to go. Should this occur, here's how we're going to transition. And we did it relatively quickly and 
pretty smooth, to be very honest with you. Um, so I think that students have been extremely pleased with the flexibility that online learning uh, offers. Not only can they keep like their multiple roles of working or having a family, um, they're also getting curriculum from a renowned university that's the same exact curriculum that's being used at the main campus and the regional campuses and receiving a significant tuition uh, discount while doing so. It's almost half the price to be online learning. So upon graduating too, a lot of people say, you know, is this going to read Azusa Pacific online or, you know, is that going to be something that is on my transcripts? And the answer is no. There is no caveat of online on a transcript because we don't see there as being a differentiation from the main campus degree. We view our online program as an extension of our learning platform, not something that's separate. And um, again, like uh, Professor Ware had said, we have the asynchronous, which is working without weekly meetings or synchronous, having weekly Zoom participation with an instructor, an instructor to fit students' needs and it's really non-restrictive. So a student can also attend a regional campus of which we have seven if they wish to have in-person classes once we return to face-to-face -to -face lectures. Um, and so we also provide academic advising, program diversity, guaranteed class availability, which is a big one, uh, alongside access to all of the exceptional on-campus services such as tutoring, career service, services, counseling, and more. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Hoshiko. Dr. Anderson, uh, thanks for perse persevering too. Uh, we all have these tech issues. Thanks for staying with us. Did you have anything to add about the online uh, kind of environment and, and uh, kind of student experience there? Not at this point? Okay, I think, think we're still trying to work out some details there. I'm going to go on to the next, the next uh, one, one additional question, and that is, um, can it, we've got a lot of students uh, who are transitioning from uh, kind of a, a either a, a professional life or family life, and they're transitioning into studies maybe um, in the evening. And and the question I have, I think, for our, our panel is. Um, maybe just has to do with um, talk about that transition from like, what are the keys to success for transitioning students who are transitioning from working full time to studying or doing something else full time to studying? Um, Dr. Hoshko, do you want to, you want to address that? Sure. So students of all ages and at all stages of life are returning for their education. I think it, that a statistic is that the average person will change career paths seven times before they find the one that they enjoy. Um, so this really actually, because of different ages, different life stages and experiences, provides a very diverse and rich experience in the classroom. Learning, we know, is a lifelong process, and this is merely a step in continuing uh, that success. So I recently teamed up with um, several other professors from different departments to uh, write an article about how to thrive in courses during this time and switch to online learning. And our best advice to people is first to settle into a routine. Routines help us deal with um, changes and settle into something that is workable for our specific situation. The second is to learn to prioritize well. Um, resetting things that compete for our time and attention sometimes means saying no or restructuring um, how we do things. Uh, setting clearly defined goals is another one. The reason that many people um, don't accomplish their goals is that they lack definition. So, you know, whenever the new year rolls around, you hear people, I want to lose weight. Uh, well, okay, how much weight do you want to lose? How do you know when you've lost weight? Um, what are you going to do to get there? What time period are you going to set? I mean, there's so many variables in there that we really encourage smart goal setting, which means that goals are simple, attainable, relevant, um, and that they matter and they're time bound. And so the last one is to find anchor points throughout your day. And um, popular studies basically say that it takes around 66 days to form 
a new habit. And that sounds like a long time to me because I'm impatient. Um, but basically there's other studies that say that you can, by using a cue or an anchor in your everyday life, something you do daily, um, like brushing your teeth, that if you tie something to that, a new habit that you want to create so that it becomes routine, it can be done in as little as a week. And I've tried this myself and it does work. So we have so much incredible research on life and brain hacks. Why not use it? So good, so practical. It's almost like it's almost like this uh, the stuff that you you're teaching is relevant to everyday life. I mean, this is like it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Thank you for that. Absolutely, Professor Ware. Did you want to add something to the that that, that this conversation? I, I don't know if I can follow up, Doctor Shiko. That 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 was I, I learned. I felt like I was in a class. Like like you said, wow, that was pretty good. Uh, from a psychology perspective, um, well, I mean. The transitioning piece, I would say, uh, one of the most important things would be uh, 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 time management. Once you you're making that transition into from 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 working your job into going to school, the, the time management piece is, is really 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 important. I mean, you have things, especially in the learning the online learning environment, you have um, things at home. What, what what are your distractions? What are, what what things can keep you? From learning, if we a lot of us have children, we have uh, their schedules are, are really our schedules because uh, because they we support them, they depend on us. So, I think what's important is finding your rhythm, whatever your rhythm is uh, in life, and making your school because this is you want to achieve. This is a big goal. This is big. This is going to affect uh, your life, your your your, the, your 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 family's life. So, finding that 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 rhythm. To make these things work and to coincide and to coexist is important. Everybody's different. My, my time management, my rhythm is going to be different from someone else's because this is their life. So finding that rhythm, I think, is really, really important. And it can work. A lot of people have done it before you. And there's be, there, there going to be a lot of people who do it after you. So you can be one of those people. Get in that stream and go forward and achieve your objectives. Go for it. So good. Such such good such good advice and Dr. Anderson's back. I I, I wanted to see. I, I we were talking about that question. Uh, this question about keys to success for students transitioning from um, working full time or doing something else full time to studying. Um, how would you? What would you suggest for for somebody who's maybe in that kind of situation? Well, one of the things is to to map out your time, and so. Sunday, use a Saturday or Sunday as a planning day and say, okay, this is what my next week looks like. This is what it looks like for me at work. This is what the schoolwork is that I have um, that is due. This is the number of readings that I have. And sometimes it'll take a minute to get into the flow. It might take a week or two to realize, okay, this is how long it takes me to read and actually comprehend what I'm reading. Um, particularly if you haven't been to school for a long time and you're used to just reading casual novels or, or, or even self-help books or whatever it may be. It takes some time to get back into, okay, this is educational reading that I'm going to be tested on or asked to apply. Um, so it takes time to figure out what your rhythm is. But once you've done that, kind of mapping out your week helps. And then another thing that a lot of my students tend to overdo is they overthink. So don't overthink it. You know, it, it's not as difficult as you're making it. The return, the transition can be very difficult and it can bring up anxiety, but it is not as difficult as you make it sometimes. And I'm speaking from experience because I took quite a break before I went from my master's to my PhD. And I know how it is kind of getting back in the swing and kind of calming yourself down like, okay, I can do this. And you can, you are capable of amazing things. And that's why we've accepted you into each of our programs. And that's why you're here. You know, there are no, I tell my students, I told them this in a recent newsletter, there are no imposters here. We're all where we're supposed to be. So just getting that into your mindset, planning out your week, realizing that you can't make it more difficult than it is, and then understanding that the professors, the instructors, we are here for you. So don't be afraid to reach out to people. And that's one of the things that I've even added in this semester in my online program, because our program is fully online, asynchronous, you're, you're all on your own in terms of the time that you set aside to do it. But I've set up optional Zoom meetings just for the people who are like, you know, I just want to talk to somebody every week. Fine, let, let's meet and let's talk, let's chat, we'll get through this together. And so just making it a good 
situation for everybody and helping people walk through those beginning steps when they first come back. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Good, good, good word there for sure. And I, I would just add this piece as we're getting close to the end here, uh, that, that when you make a transition like this, the people really matter. First of all, the people in your life that care about you, that are invested in your future, to enlist their support, to make sure they're on board. If you're married, if you have a significant relationship, you have kids, talk to them about it, enlist their support. And then when you choose where you go to school, choose an institution like APU where you get to talk to great people like the ones you're seeing today. I'm sorry, I, I really mean that. You know, I just, I get the chance. I think this is the thing that um, I think who these people are that um, we've been talking to today um, really, um, I think, comes through. And I will tell you that what you have seen on the screen today is consistent with my experience of each of these individuals, caring, thoughtful, invested in, in the success of students. So I um, want to say thank you for, for um, uh, your thoughts and, and kind of uh, offering an an entry point, a potential roadmap, and a direction and way to go for uh, prospective students, potential students. Um, as we wrap up uh, this part and get in just a second, get to a little bit more presentation. Any final parting words from our, our panel? I'll, in fact, I'll start um, maybe with Professor Ware and kind of circle around. Any final words? Yes, I, I I really enjoyed this 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 event. This is really really now. Nice. Hopefully, I can do another one. Please invite me. And um, it's been great uh, seeing and talking to my my colleagues here. And um, Azusa Pacific is definitely the place I'm going to be. So I look forward to seeing uh, you ladies again, uh, Dr. Levishoff, you as well. And any new students that want to uh, come on board, I'll be here waiting on you. All right, thank you, Professor Ware. Any, th any other comment, any final comments before we bring, uh, bring Sophie back? Just echoing what you said, Drake, like thank you so much for having us. Um, it has been a pleasure. We love doing speaking engagements. We love being part of the community. Um, it's super important to us. And I think that one of the things that speaks highly to how dedicated we are is if you do decide to inquire, um, you're not going to just be talking um, to anyone and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? You're going to have a program representative and we even do free transcript evaluations with the directors of this is what will transfer over. This is what your course of study will look like. And we would be more than happy to sit down and do that either via phone or Zoom or a platform like this. So people make sure that they're making the right decision for them. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Hoshiko. Dr. Anderson, you want to get in the get in the final word for us? Just a huge thank you for for being here today and listening to us talk about the programs that we have. And the reason you see a smile on on all of our faces is because we really do love what we do. We love the APU community, and it is a community. So if you are interested in completing your bachelor's, if you're interested in going on for your master's, this is a great place. What a great way to finish the, the panel conversation. I think at this point, what we're gonna do is invite Sophie to come back and uh, she's gonna share a little bit more with us. Uh, but again, want to um, just emphasize really a thank you to those who've been watching and, and kind of engaging and a thank you to the panel. Uh, thank you all for your investment. I, I can tell you that what, I can't tell that what you shared here is consistent with uh, what I've experienced with each of you individually as, as I've talked about um, just what you do and, and the important work we have with students. With that, Sophie, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you so much. I just want to quickly say thank you to our faculty. I have worked at three universities now and I've been so impressed with the quality of faculty that we have at APU all across the board at every regional campus and at our main campus. So just thank you for being here. Um, so I'm going to now go over some frequently asked questions that, you know, just that is kind of general to any online program. Uh, so I'll share my screen one moment.
All right, so some frequently asked questions about online learning. I know a lot of these things have been covered, so I'll just go over them quickly. Um, Typically, the classes are auto-synchronous, but we also have synchronous learning uh, at APU. Uh, so like I said before, that means if you need to you know, take your test at midnight because you had other, other obligations, um, as long as you're before the deadline, you should be able to access that course 24-7. Um, the classes will have you know, assignments, due dates, just like face-to-face -face courses. Um, so, and like our, our faculty mentioned, the, the classes at APU are gonna be the same as as they would be in person. So you are gonna get the full educational experience even though you're online. Um, APU has a lot of online resources available for students. Uh, we have 24 seven technical support if you're having trouble logging into your, into your Canvas account, those kinds of things. We have library resources, the Academic Success Center. Uh, the Writing Center is a commonly used resource if you, if you are, just getting back into the swing of things for um, for college, uh, and you're not quite sure if your if your paper is is the proper grammar. If you've cited things correctly, you can actually just send that over to our writing center, and they'll do a virtual meeting with you, or you can talk back and forth um, through our online platforms. And then we also have an online bookstore where they help they will help supply you with all the you know, gear you need to be an APU Cougar, and then also your books and things like that. So. This is really important to the resources for online students as you're researching where you want to attend school, like definitely look, ask, ask people what kind of online resources do you have for me since I'll be an online student. All right, so do you need any special equipment or software? You do need a computer and you do need high speed internet access. Most online platforms are accessible within internet browsers. So that's, that's pretty common now. Uh, how do online courses compare to face-to-face -face courses? Uh, both courses have um, dedicated instructors at APU uh, and they'll communicate you through a variety of ways. I know that uh, Dr. Anderson was talking about how if, if students need to meet with her, even though it's a totally online class, she's so happy to do that. So um, like I said, really do your research and, and think about what you need in terms of support for your online learning. All right, so this I, this is a list of all of the online programs we offer at APU. We offer bachelor's degrees, doctoral programs, master's degrees. Uh, as a whole, APU offers many more degrees than this, but I just wanted to highlight these online programs. Uh, so like Dr. Hoshiko works with our bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, Professor Ware works with our uh, master's programs in the master of business administration and the master's of business management. And then Dr. Anderson works with our uh, master's in strategic communication. So I know this video is gonna be posted later and if you wanna go back and just look at the online programs we offer, you're welcome to, to look here. Uh, but I also recommend using our website. Um, and if you are local in the Marietta, Temecula area, Wildemar area, uh, we offer more programs at our Marietta campus. So we have the bachelor's degrees, um, our, our uh, business programs, and then we also have master's degrees in, uh, in teaching so you can get your credential. Uh, and yeah, all of these classes also have in-person classes as well if that's something that you're interested in doing. All right, so financial aid, this is a big question for everyone. How will I fund my education? I would say the first step that students should look into is completing the FAFSA. Uh, that is gonna tell the university whether you receive any free federal aid or whether you receive any uh, student loans. Uh, and so even if you don't think you'll qualify for any student uh, aid from the government, it is definitely a great idea to fill it out. It's, it's free and it's just a way so that you have all of your options available. Um, we There's also a ton of scholarships and grants out there that may not even be associated with the university that you're looking at. Um, the, a website that is popular for our students to use is FastWeb and you can search thousands of scholarships and see which ones you might qualify for. Uh, APU is also very proud to be a military friendly school. We have a yellow ribbon program and a yellow ribbon scholarship, uh, and we accept your, your military benefits. And we have a whole department dedicated to working with our students and 
laying that out for them. Um, so there, there are military and veteran education benefits department or MVEB. Uh, and so if you're a military student and you need to use your benefits, APU is a, is a great place to look, but there's a lot of institutions that will accept um, um, your, your military benefits. Uh, and then one last thing that is, is great to just even ask your company, if, if you're already working, see if your company will offer any tuition reimbursement. Uh, you might be surprised, all you have to do is go to your HR department and, and they'll be able to tell you from there. All right, so quickly, I just also want to mention that we are having a virtual preview night tonight, uh, Tuesday, September 29th, uh, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. There's an optional financial aid or military and veteran services workshop at 5.30, but you will learn more about the programs offered specifically at the regional campus. So we have our business, bachelor's and master's degrees, our criminal justice program, psychology, uh, digital media and communications bachelor's degree, and then we also have our master's in school counseling, school psychology, and then our teacher education programs. And so if you're interested in attending this, there, there is still time to RSVP. Um, just go ahead and uh, you can call the number there or email us. You can also, you know, direct message us on Instagram and I'll make sure you get an RSVP link. Um, but that, that will be a great event where you'll actually have a chance to speak with some faculty uh, in the area that you're interested in. So. It's a, it's a very popular event. The students who attend really, really enjoy it. All right, and this is the contact information for the Marietta campus for APU. Uh, our phone, email, website. A website is, that's a great place to start. If you're interested in any of the programs we talked about today or exploring other programs, go ahead and submit an inquiry. You can learn more about that information and a program representative like me will reach out to you and we'll talk with you over the phone or video call you, kind of whatever you need to feel comfortable learning about the program. And then we also have social media um, that you're welcome to follow us on and just learn a little bit more uh, about, about our programs and, and who we are as a university. So that's kind of all I have for the basic facts about online learning, but we're happy to answer any questions that other, other people might have watching this. Well, I will just jump right back in. Thank you guys so much. This has been so informative and such an amazing discussion. Um, I know I took copious amounts of notes um, since it's been a while since I've been to school. Um, <laughs> and um, I don't have any questions at this point. Um, they may just reach out to you, that might be the case. Um, but I wanted to say I loved what Dr. Anderson said about being an overthinker and, you know, everything <laughs> when it comes to um, schooling and and just how overwhelming it can, it can be. And I think all the resources and everything you guys discussed today has been so helpful to just kind of demystify going back to school or demystify going and you know pivoting your education to online i think that this has been such a great great conversation for sure i feel better <laughs> so um yeah thank you guys so much i i truly appreciate um all of all of the discussion um and i hope um I hope that everybody goes to the preview night for sure to get more information and, and, and learn about the programs and, and kind of go in and get a little bit more of a deep dive into what you guys offer. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Heather. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, um, everybody knows how to contact you. Um, and, and one more time, thank you so much. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.